Hello, welcome to Anderson's TV. My name is Jack Duxbury. He's the Maltese Falcon. And this is the Behringer UBXA. Hopefully that gave you a little taste of what this thing sounds like. I'm now gonna tell you the key specs of it whilst you look at Gorgeous Sweets by the Falcon. 16 voice by Tombrality with two analog oscillators per voice. Switchable two pole or four pole VCF. Two ADSR envelopes for the VCF and for the VCA. A six waveform LFO. Unison mode. Keyboard split and doubling. Programmable sequencer versatile arpeggiator, comprehensive modulation options, 512 patch memories, 35 split keyboard programs, 35 doubled programs, 64 step sequences in every patch memory, vibrato and filter foot pedal options, stereo outputs, MIDI control over DIN and USB, separate MPE pitch bend filter and matrix control, over the lower and upper keyboard, so that means we've got polyphonic aftertouch in there. Hopefully that gave you an idea of the specs of this beast. Let's get into the sounds of it. We've only had it for a little bit of time, so we're gonna go through categories of sounds. Let's start with synth pad sounds. We've found a few presets that we like. By the way, if you wanna skip ahead, we put the chapter markers in below, so let's go into some synth pad sounds. Few pad sounds there for you. Let's do some bass sounds. Did some pads, did some bass. Let's check out some of the lead sounds.
That's listening to the presets. Let's go on a bit of a wander across the features individually that are on the front panel. So a bit of talking from me, a bit of fiddling, and we'll start from this initialized state. This is what it sounds like in an initial patch. Pretty bland, okay, but that's cool. We're going to work on that. Let's start on the far left. We've got master volume. We've got this auto button, which if you hold it, it'll auto tune it, tell you the temperature of the keyboard as well. Uh, so that's if you're ever a bit wonky or want to know what state it's in, it takes about 15 minutes to warm up. You can hold that and see where you're at. Next to it, we've got the balance, which is when you're using the multi tombrality. So multi tombrality is like two sounds at once or stacked split or layered and it's really easy we'll get to that in a bit chord button below it that means that if i play a chord like this uh, major seven and tap chord i can one finger house jam all the way uh, master tune self-explanatory next bit is a control section uh, portamentos at the top that's polyphonic portamento so that means the notes can move at different speeds individually it's that thx intro type sound for that let's before we get there i'm just going to put on a saw wave so you can hear what it's doing a bit more crank the portamento and play a chord you can even make it a bit longer Yeah, they all move at different times, that's cool. Unison below it stacks the 16 voices on top of each other and makes it monophonic. Can't play chords. So that's those 16 voices together. If you shift and tap unison, you can change the amount of voices that are stacked in unison. And if you shift and detune, you can detune you can get that big super saw type sound. So that's the control section. Next up on the menu, arpeggiator, keeping with the saw sound, back to poly mode. We can turn it on. We can hold it. And it's got the settings button there. You can change the type of arpeggiator that's in there. Loads of different options. Next to it now, we're into the modulation section. We've got a single LFO here and Interesting how they implement it. You see we've got two columns, one and two, and underneath it we can choose where the LFO is sent to and how much. I think of it a bit like sending to a bus for reverb and things like that. That's how I got my head around it. Loads of different types of waveform, even an interesting thing that I haven't seen before. So let's see if I can demo it. Oscillator one frequency. getting it wibbly wobbly there. Also got filter frequency. And just in regards to that shape, something interesting, SMP, that will sample the other LFO that we'll get to in a minute. I haven't seen that before, but that's pretty self-explanatory. On to the oscillators. We were listening to that saw wave. This is the triangle that it comes starts with here. Triangle underneath. Saw. Pulse. Pulse width. Now we can add another oscillator. Interesting, because you can go halfway. Or full. So now we've got two pulse waves. Let's do it with the saws. And these are tuned in octaves, number one. Or we can detune them. Uh, Let's put that back down to zero. And now we're rocking with my favorite two saws, right? And we're in filter town. In this state, it's a two pole filter. So let's have a sweep of that. Four pole.
really different character with filter tracking as well. One of the things as I understand it, is that people are looking for the sound of the resonance on this type of keyboard, right? So let's do that using the envelope. We can send how much we want of it to go to the envelope here with modulation. That'll send it over here. Let's crank up the decay and max out the resonance and see what happens when we play a chord and listen to that resonance decay over time. Right? I understand that people are looking for that sound. That's what it sounds like. We, let's turn that down, let's get back to a... Actually, let's leave it there, but a little bit slower, I think. So we'll rock with that. Uh, we've got a pretty simple ADSR envelope. Also, underneath, we've got... I say pretty simple, but with shift functions, we can delay the onset of the envelopes and all manner of business. Be sure to check out them. The manual is extensivo, crikey O'Reilly. Everything's explained in there, so when you buy it, very clear manual, I dig that, I dig that. Let's put a little bit of release on it. A little bit less of the... Yeah, we're back in the 80s, baby. They're the envelopes. Maybe this is a good time. We've loved it with the Falcon before, listening to the different vintage modes. So we've got a pad sound here. And now I'm gonna go through the different vintage modes. Very well explained in the manual. This isn't some simple EQ curve they are changing the parameters of all the controls here and they tell you. So let's go shift and vintage. At the moment it's in stereo mode. This is it in OBXA mode. This is it in OB8 mode. Creamy mode. Broken mode, like me. Gnarly mode. Bright. Modern. Back to stereo. Here there's a lot going on there. Everything changing. Everything changing. Baby. It's all off, kicking off. And like I said, very well explained in the manual, but we're gonna stick in stereo. Let's go over to this thing on the left, which is the performance LFO. We've got one LFO here, and that will be stored in all your presets. This is free from those constrictions of being in a preset, so let's basically slap it on when you want some wibbly wobbly stuff or another LFO. So we've got full gamut of waveforms here. I can maybe get the pitch going on oscillator one. Yeah. And that's where this sampling of this waveform becomes quite interesting. I think, uh, I've never seen that before. We can change the bend amount. I love the feeling of these. Very unique, really good. Uh, you're probably gonna ask me what it feels like. And also the key bed, little point on that. It feels great, it's very responsive. Mainly due, I think, because it's got that polyphonic aftertouch in there, which is, means it's MPE compatible. Think of Roly C boards and things like that. Or if you've got other synths that are MPE compatible, uh, this will unlock that potential. So it's very responsive keybed, 
Really good action on here. This is like an extra bonus down here. Octaves up and down, transpose right on the front panel. I dig it. Let's um, have a little touch on the multi-tombality of it. We can split and we can stack voices on here because we've got so many, we've got 16, right? Right in the middle under keyboard, split, double, lower, upper. Split for a sound either side of a designated point. Double if we want to stack them. Low and upper means that we're editing that sound. So when you're upper, you are controlling that sound. I dig this patch called pan shift. But I want to put a bass sound under it to play with my left hand. I hit split and I can see as simple as that. If I go to lower, I can choose what patch I want on there. And I want this one. And that means I can play that sound. The split points here. You can hear that, so. It's as simple as that. Cool, I hope that gave you an idea of what this B sounds like. Thank you, Behringer, and well done, Behringer. Right, this is a new type of product for them. It's got the kitchen sink, I think that few years of development that they've had teasing online I feel like they've listened to everything because I saw the same videos I was like oh Jones in for one of these and you can see people go well I'll buy one if it's got this if I'll buy one if it's got this and if it comes in at this price point and it seems like they were listening right because it's got everything in there and with regards to the price I'm not normally asked to talk about price but I'm assured that it's going to come in at under 1500 US dollars don't know what that will mean for us, but around the world, at that price point, they are adamant it's gonna come in under that. So that's an assurance from them. Don't know when it's gonna be out. Very lucky, as I said, this is a pre-production unit. It just invokes the look of it, the feel of it, that classic sound. And thanks for watching this video. If you like what we're doing, please consider subscribing. If you don't, let us know. We learn from the hate. Thanks so much for sticking around. Really appreciate it. Et voila, ici, maintenant. Okay, okay. Oh, oh yeah. Here we go. Hope for the Bay Ringer. Mate, after you. Oh, I'll give that a play. Yeah, please do. Yeah, do you really know what it is? Oh, <laughs> damn. <laughs> What do you want from a synth? That. Yeah. <laughs> At the moment, I think I've got it split. Okay. But you can make it on the chair and have a little play oh, with it. Take the throne. Now, Fat. one yeah. thing yeah, that I think <laughs> might excite whippersnappers. Mm. Why are you master? Oh. Okay, <laughs> <why>? <laughs> Good, thank you, mate. Check this out, right? So you got this going. If you go shift and vintage, and then play chords and flick this, they've got eight different modes. Creamy. Creamy, yeah. Broken, yeah, man. Set, yeah. And then what that does, they've even got it on a table. They show you what they've knocked out a tune right, yeah, basically yeah. across it. Lovely filter. And then have a flip through on the presets, man. I'll yeah. leave you two. We got a subway. I'll, I'll serve up the Falcon. This nice, man. <laughs> nice, man. Got a few different it's banks on here as well, yeah. I think.
Pretty insane, man. Pretty insane. Esoteric clap. Wow. This synth is freaking unbelievable, right? It's the most powerful, best sounding synth I've ever had the chance of playing in this room. Such a lively, deep, fat sounding synth. Not only does it nail that Oberheim OBX sound, but it adds eight voices, 16 voices, poly aftertouch, atrophy, and much, much more. Uh, this is really an OBXA on steroids. It took Behringer a long time to design it, but now I know why. <laughs>